Good Vibes, Creating a Positive Workplace to Boost Profits by Philip M. Perry. Negative businesses have a tough time making money. Employees with bad attitudes tend to pull back and maximize job security rather than create innovative solutions to business problems. Even worse, customers feel unwanted and abandoned. Negative thinking carries a real cost in terms of workplace productivity, says John Wagner, a clinical counselor in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Much of that cost results from poor employee performance. In the worst cases, adds Wagner, toxic workplaces cause the best employees to jump ship for the competition. Finding, hiring, and training replacement require investments in time, money, that could be better spent elsewhere. You can avoid these costly matters by creating a positive environment in your own workplace. Here's how. Change happens. Negative people create negative workplaces. It stands to reason, then, that to create a productive business environment, you need to change the thinking of those who contribute to a toxic one. Your entire staff needs to adopt a positive mental attitude. Take Gloomy Gus, one of your long-time workers and chief negative thinker. Maybe you think he'll never change his attitude, but evidence suggests he can. Over the past few decades, scientific research has disproved the idea that our brains are set in stone once we reach our late 20s, says Sandy Weaver-Cartman, an Atlanta-based management consultant. In fact, we can learn new ways of thinking and new ways of looking at the world. Granted, people do tend to resist change, but that is a matter of choice. Very often, people simply do not want to go to the trouble of learning anything new, says Carmen. They need to be motivated. That means Gus needs to be helped to start thinking of life as a glass half full instead of half empty. Start with number one. So how do you motivate gloomy Gus and employees like him? Start by setting an example. The person in charge sets the tone for the entire workplace, says Julie Alexander, a management consultant in Garland, Texas. People take their clues from their boss. Unfortunately, it is easy to fall off track when faced with challenging business events. To maintain a positive attitude, we must adopt patterns of behavior that reinforce our productive mindset in the worst of times. And behavior is the key. We cannot control our emotions, but we can control how we respond to our emotions. Two behaviors tend to impact our mental state, says Tina Hales, a management consultant in Madison, Wisconsin. The first is that we choose to think, and the second is what we choose to do on a moment-to-moment basis. Those little things add up. Such habits need not be major. They can be as inconsequential as buying coffee for a security guard or taking a walk in the fresh air each morning before work, and they will differ with each person. Determining to maintain a PMA is a great first step, but it's also important to get feedback on how you're doing. What does your staff think about your attitude? Your image may not be as positive as you imagine. Most of us think we're happy-go-lucky, says Carmen, but we may be showing the world something much different. Ask your staff how you look to them, then listen to their responses. If they say you tend to be gruff, then it's time to rethink your style. Pass it on. Once you've put yourself together, encourage your employees to follow your example. How? Alexander suggests building a work environment around the recipe of care, collaboration, attitude, responsibility, and enthusiasm. Here's what each ingredient of that recipe means. Collaboration, a successful business result from cooperative effort. No one person is a lone ranger. Attitude, everyone is encouraged to maintain a PMA at all times. Responsibility, every employee must learn to own a customer's problem. That means following through on every sale and service initiative until the customer is satisfied. Enthusiasm, exhibit enthusiasm about your own duties and invite your staff to follow suit. Customers notice right away when the employees are enthusiastic about their work. Sidebar, how to stay happy. Good habits lead to good mental attitudes. Four experts on psychology offer their best ideas for getting and staying in the groove. Exercise regularly, take care of yourself. Watch the words you say to yourself. Reframe your thoughts about bad events into statements that create opportunity. Take yourself lightly. When we laugh at ourselves, we learn more quickly from our mistakes. Spend 20 minutes out in the fresh air before going out into the office. Spread random goodness. When you stop for coffee, get one for a security guard. Find a good thing to celebrate every day with your staff. Every now and then, take the staff out for drinks or a snack. When you feel workplace stress, pause and take three to five slow, deep breaths. At the end of each day, think back and dwell on two or three good things that happened. When you mess up, fess up. Managers who do that gain respect from their employees. Spend one hour a day doing what you enjoy. Create opportunities for the staff to have fun. Encourage levity in the workplace that does not come at someone else's expense. The secret to getting care in place, quality engagement with employees. You need to be a good communicator and encourage good communication among your staff members, says Alexander. Be open to one-on-one conversations and schedule regular staff meetings in which people feel they are listened to and their opinions matter. 
Stay alert when conversing with your staff. Focusing on being present when people talk to you, says Carmen. Bosses too often let their minds wander. With their attention pulled in so many directions, supervisors might glance at their phones or their watches or over their shoulder of the people whom they are talking. Let go of the toy and be present, says Carmen. If people feel like you value them, they will be happier, and so will you in the long run. Let it go. Beyond quality communication, you can also encourage a PMA by letting people exercise their creativity in their daily duties. When you delegate, let the tasks go, says Wagner. Lighten up. Not trusting people to make the right decisions will limit them. People cannot rise up to low expectations, Wagner says. If you don't believe your team can handle a task, it probably won't. Keep training people and focus on their strengths. Help people create a new solution by being scientific about what you want. People want to live up to others' expectations, says Alexander, but if those expectations are not made clear, people flounder and do not know what to do. Of course, people will make errors. When that happens, don't be judgmental. Encourage your staff to learn from mistakes and try again. Employees are creative and productive when they are released from fears that they are not allowed to mess up, says Wagner, and when they know they are free to ask for help. Mistakes are corrected quickly. All of the above tips have one thing in common. They describe behaviors that lead to positive thinking. That's a more effective approach than trying to browbeat people into being happy. You want to help employees be happier thinkers, says Carmen, but you have to be careful. You can't tell people how to think. You do not want to be the happiness police or big brother. Follow through. Creating a happy, productive workplace is a long game. It's not a matter of flicking a switch or reading a book. You need to consciously adopt good mental habits and motivate others to do the same. While the process takes time, everything starts with individual managerial commitment. You have to want your employees to be more positive in their thinking house. You have to feel it's worth the effort. New York-based freelancer Philip Perry negotiates win-win deals with his clients everywhere.